you're watching new statement television i want to talk a little bit more about about the book and this extraordinary opportunity that amit had to be pit to be pit side while a lot of things were happening i i must tell you when i went to south africa in 1992 there were some of us there most of the people in this room as well and it was a journey into the unknown we didn't know where we were going we didn't have visas we we, we just had a little sticker put knew nothing about the country some of us had read alan payton's cry the bill of rights country so we knew about johannesburg as a big bad city and there's this young dapper looking manager and i said how is he going to handle that thing because that was as much a political tour as it was a cricketing tour so tell us about handling some of the pressures the political pressure as well as the cricketing pressure i mean i remember we were in bloemfontein once in the town hall in bloemfontein and i was told that was the largest congregation of brown people ever in the town hall because brown people are not allowed inside so that just gives you an idea of how politically sensitive the tour was fw de klerk was still there nelson mandela was not yet the uh, the president so how how easy or difficult was that and oh sorry and given the fact that you had traditional links to the african national congress well it was a political minefield as you said apartheid was breaking down mandela had been released uh, declared was the president we didn't have relations with south africa we didn't have friends with government our passports were marked passports were marked uh, is it okay yes <coughs> Our passports were marked not valid for South Africa, and uh, there's nobody there to guide us about anything. And uh, there's always a tightrope walk between uh, being with the ANC and you know meeting up with Mandela and showing solidarity with, with the emerging political situation. At the same time, keeping a distance from De Klerk. And I remember one particular incident when it became rather sensitive. We asked for a meeting with Mandela, which was immediately granted, and we all went with the team to meet him. And uh, he was completely gracious. You know, he spoke about Gandhi, very welcoming and warm, and you felt that you were in the presence of somebody extraordinary. And immediately after that, there was a dispatch, or I don't know, some team, and Dick Clark wanted to meet with the team. Now we didn't know what to do. We were not supposed to be seen with Dick Clark. So I checked with Ali Abaka for guidance because there is nobody from the Foreign Office uh, in South Africa to assist us. So Ali said, "Listen, you can't do this. You can't be seen publicly to meet him. At the same time, how do you say no to the president?" So ultimately, what was decided was that the club would come to the dressing room five minutes, shake hands, no cameras, and go away. So that's what happened. But uh, it was very sensitive politically, and uh, I think everybody remembers that there was uh, this huge expectation that a non-white team has come and maybe it will avenge all the you know atrocities and all the oppression the non-whites have gone through. So there was this massive political undertone to the tour. Unfortunately, the tour didn't go very well for the Indian team. You know, we were. We went into a, what was called politically a sensitive place. At the same time, the cricket itself was like playing team party. Nobody knew anything. We know we had no idea about the players, the venues, pitches, conditions. And I remember the first team meeting. Somebody actually got up and asked me, "Captain, who is it?" The captain was saying, "Captain, yeah." And he played for Australia. He played for a hundred, whatever. And that was the level of ignorance. We were completely unprepared. There was no camp before the tour. There was uh, no support staff. I think Ali, Doctor Ali Ram is here. So we had that. The Ali is there. We were a team of 17 with 40 team members. Ali Twadiger's uh, coach, me and Ali. Now we were support staff of 20. So uh, very often Ali and I would be helping out with the fielding drills. So that's the level of you know the cricket preparation and. Thing was another thing that I think Sunny is very aware of. We reached South Africa and the plane conditions were not sorted. We were told, "Don't you bother with Lena, with Lena." But can you imagine something like that happening now? With every minute detail of a tour is agreed in advance, contractually written down, signed off, and there, you know, we said, "Don't you bother with Lena." And sure enough, 
when we reached there, Ali threw two things at us. One, he mentioned this thing about the television you know, acting decision maker in terms of line calls. Then he also said maybe there should be three umpires and two would stand in a session, one would take a break so that nobody's tired. Now, when you were supposed to go to a team meeting, there are certain things I didn't know. I didn't know that Sunny had already had some discussion with Ali because Mr. Darby had asked him. But we were not aware of that. So we didn't know what had transpired between Ali and uh, you know, Sunny and Singh. Then, when this thing came about three umpires and television replays, I asked uh, Ajit as uh, coach to come. He said to make it. Then there was other, other said after they now, I'm like, I don't know. So both ducked. So ultimately, Ravi was the vice captain. Ravi and I went. And Ravi promptly shot down that suggestion of three umpires, saying umpires require consistency about wide, global, etc. So we, we can't have different people coming in. But uh, we had no reason to oppose television replays for line decisions. So my point is that we were completely unprepared of uh, what was uh, happening, what to expect. When I read the book and he said, I asked Ali for advice on what to do. He said, how can Ali Rani advise him on what to do with F.W. Duckler? And Nelson Mandela's Mandela so Ali could <laughs> Then he would make your job. But it was so like Ramon Dhabi. I didn't know him very well, but from what little I knew of him, it would be just like him to say, I know there is a meeting, but Sunny, you just look at it also. Yeah, I mean, um, he asked me to speak with uh, about the playing conditions. And uh, I did speak to Ali and we, we got to a situation where uh, he was talking about these things. I said that, that um, for example, switching the lights on as well. Yeah. I said that the team has to, uh, you know, agree. I, can't, I can't speak to you on, on behalf of the team. Because I was not officially, I was there for commentary. Right. But I wasn't uh, officially connected with the team at all. And uh, also I think, you know, one of the things that I uh, kept, uh, we kept going back and forth was that I said, look, no way should a bowler at the boundary be allowed to take a, a, a trick. Okay. Um, because I said, what's the point? Cricket is a game of stamina. The fast bowler bowls one over, he goes to deep fine leg. He said, but no time is wasted. I said, no, no, it doesn't matter whether the time is wasted or not. I think, you know, this is a game of stamina. Batters don't get that opportunity to have a drink every, at the end of every over. So why should a bowler on the boundary where the 12th man or 14th you know, player comes in and, and uh, you know, gives you the thing. That's not the gatorade or stamina or whatever it is. And, uh, but that did happen. And I think with everything, you know, when you, when you look at any, any breach or any bending of the rules, you know, it just takes one instance. And once that is accepted without anybody doing anything, it becomes a flow. And that's what's happening to you. You find that at the you know at the end a bowler can come in and bowl really at about 145, 150 kilometers per hour, but at the end of it, he bowls those six deliveries. He's got somebody yeah. waiting for it the uh, on the boundary with him. Batters don't have that. And speaking of uh, you know the playing conditions being decided only after the team landed, that that was happening even during the time that we did, and uh, the. Uh, uh, the, the sort of biggest instance of that I remember is when we went to Australia in, uh, in 1977-78 and uh, I didn't know at, at that stage I was vice captain but I had no idea what had, uh, you know, that this, this had happened. But it was the last test match we were playing in at, uh, at Adelaide and uh, I, I happened to be you know sitting next to Sir Don Bradman. This was in those days the uh, the host association would, uh, you know, have a dinner for the teams on the eve of the match or on the third, third, third day because the, the next day would be a rest day. And I happened to be sitting next to Sir Don Bradman and Vasu Paranjpe, my brother union captain, had told me that if you ever get to sit or speak to Don Bradman, you're not going to miss anything. And you're going to report to me what you have written, now what, what you have, uh, you know, uh, spoken to him, what he has spoken to, particularly what he has spoken to. So I'm, I'm talking to him and he was basically talk, asking about, uh, amazingly about the Indian political situation. And again, I mean, he's, he said that several times about about the fact that he was, you know, sorry that he hadn't 
come out to wave to the Indian you know, crowd that had gathered at the dock, dock side in 1948 when the, when, the, when the ship that was carrying the Australian team to England uh, stopped over in, in uh, Mumbai for, uh, for, for, for a halt. So he's talking about that. And on my left, he was on my left, Sir Don. On his left for the president of the South Australian Cricket Association. On his left was uh, Bishan Singh Bedi, the captain of the team. On his left was Polyam Vigar, who was manager of the team. And, you know. So, in the middle of that dinner, <coughs> Polyam Vigar just leans back and uh, says to me, Hey Sunil, hey, one day Pushki ki video came out. <laughs> so, basically, for those who don't understand the other thing, what he was saying is, ki A1, I mean, I didn't even know that's what A1 meant. What he was saying is, ask him, ask Sir Don, how good was Vino, like Vino Mankar. How good was Vino Mankar? So, I, I, I'm like, and then before, before I could ask him anything, uh, ask Sir Don anything, Sir Don turned to me and said, uh, what language was that? <laughs> so I said, well, it's uh, Gujarati, but you know the Parsi have a separate way, different way of uh, of speaking. He said, yeah, because you know at the start of the tour, when he and I, Polly and I were discussing playing conditions, Polly was talking to me in that language, and I had to tell him, Polly, I don't understand that language. <laughs> so, I want to say a few things. You mentioned about the role of a manager. Now, I was manager on this tour in 92. And it was a bit embarrassing. Because I realized that the manager is actually the, in a way, the leader of the delegation. In terms of protocol, he comes ahead of the captain and everybody else. And the embarrassment was that here's Ajit Vatikar. You know? But when it came to protocol, I sort of have a position different from him. For instance, I get a suite in a hotel, not a suite. And only the captain and the manager would get suites. So I found it very embarrassing at times. Secondly, I realized that at the end of the tour, I am supposed to write a report on the team and the players. So, I have to write a report on, uh, say, Azad, Kapil, Ravi Shastri, and, you know, point out things like performance, discipline, commitment, hard work. Now, can you imagine somebody like me, who should not be doing this, writing a report on how good Kapil was in terms of discipline or how there is something. But fortunately, uh, I realized that kuch bhi likho, kuch so, so that's exactly what happened. I'm sure professor is here. He's aware of this. He's been managed on many tours. So you do submit your report, and it just goes into some file. Nobody reads it. So that's a lot of embarrassment. See, now you know why Amrit can never write the sensational best. <laughs> Anybody else would have said, report me, I said this. But it's interesting, on that tour of three Indian scored hundreds, on that tour of South Africa, two of them are in this room. Kapil Dev isn't, Praveen Amre is. And we played a media game where much to the sadness of some other journalist, Sunil Gavaskar scored a hundred. <laughs> because he was in partnership with a journalist from Kolkata. Got him. <laughs> and all the other Kolkata journalists are now worried that this guy is going to get a scoop about batting with Sunil Gavaskar. So every two hours, someone would come out with drinks for Sunny, whether he wanted them or no. Someone would come running out, so they could do a story of taking drinks out. But uh, Praveen, Praveen, was off. Praveen was off on that tour. Yeah. Waited, waited five and a half hours for a spinner to come into bowl. He was the, I think he took five and a half hours to make 80 runs and two or three minutes to go home 80 to 100 runs. It's been like a month. Yeah, this was Durban. He was actually done 38 for four on a green wicket and Praveen on debut with 100. Fantastic. Praveen, where are you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think the first it was one of the finest hundreds you can see. And you're absolutely right. I think he really fought it out till uh, yeah. 80 because uh, they had a very good. Uh, attack, fast bowling attack, tremendous attack and then uh, uh, when uh, Omar Henry came in, my god, I was thinking that even before Omar started his run up, he was going down the pitch, he was, the he was so, so far down the pitch, I don't think he allowed him any, any chance to land the ball, but what a
what a, what a wonderful thing. But, you know, I mean, so many years down the road, it's still up there in my, you know, mind, mind's eye. It's the quality of that run. It's absolutely top class. So another great hundred yeah. on that tour was Kapil Dev. You know, this was a Port Elizabeth test match. India 31 for 6. Brett Schultz releasing rockets. And Kapil with 129 from there. I think it's one of the innings which is on par with his 175 maybe against Zimbabwe in the World Cup. But absolutely sensational innings. Yeah, I think I remember him hitting Alan Donald over the straight uh, uh, pavilion for a six. So, again, a terrific uh, century. Tell us about Bill Cobb. 1996, the World Cup came back to India after 1987. And I don't think everyone still is aware of all that happened to bring the World Cup back to India in, in 1996. I think we had a great chance of winning it as we did in 87, but that's, that's a separate story. But there was so much that was happening around that 96 World Cup. There was India, Pakistan, was, was Sri Lanka involved as well? Yeah. Not, not just Sri Lanka yeah, as well. Lanka of course, Sri Lanka as well. Well, that was decided. That was, I think, the first time the Asian bloc sort of got together <coughs> as a group. India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, three test playing countries. Because the World Cup was allotted through an election. And the members had to vote and decide where it went. So Mr. Dalmia, who was an expert at working numbers, realized that firstly we need these three with us. And then he approached all the associate members, all the Indians, in various countries across the world, heading cricket bodies, who were contacted, uh, sort of uh, their, their support, you know, sort of obtained in some manner or the other. And uh, another great help was Zimbabwe, Mr. Tingoka, who became a lifelong friend of India, voted for India, I think, for 20 years after that. So a little bit of a struggle, but we got the World Cup. But there was an immediate challenge that uh, the PILCOM had to pay certain guarantee money to the ICC in order to retain the right to stay in the World Cup. And there was no money. There was no money in the BCC and Pakistan or Sri Lanka. So the way out was to sell television rights and get an advance pay of ICC and get along, along with the job. Now there were tenders put out twice and there were no bidders for the television rights in the World Cup. Why is Rahul laughing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how desperate the situation was. And after two rounds of unsuccessful bidding, there comes Mark Mascarinus suddenly, after the process is over, saying that I can make a bid. Now the problem was that how do you get somebody new in? Because this is against all the normal protocols of a tender. So but ultimately, as there was no other person willing to put up the money, it went to Pilcom and after a lot of discussion and back and forth, he agreed. And he guaranteed and got the rights to the World Cup of $10 billion. I think that's less money out now for one IPL game. So this was the entire World Cup, rights sold for $10 million or something. So that's a really quite a story in those days. And of course, as happened in 87, so also in 96, it was a it was a tournament that the Western media had said was doomed from the start and these guys can't organize it very well. And to think that both 87 and 96 actually turned out to be fantastic, uh, fantastic tournaments. And I think that was around where the tide started to shift, when India started asserting its, its power from being a country that said yes, for, yes to everything, but India started asserting its power to the extent that apparently Amrit was sent to Scotland Yard to check out security arrangements in, in, in England. Come on, tell us, tell us. Well, this is one of the most farcical stories you can you know, <laughs> talk about. Mr. Dalmi had this problem with England. You know, he was very pissed off by their attitude, the superior attitude of trying to show India down at every stage. So he did two, three things. First, as soon as he became ICC chief, after having sorted out the, you know, Australia and England, and he actually put India on the global map in terms of ICC. He got respect for India. Other countries started fearing India in terms of ICC and things. Secondly, when it came to England, they had this habit of sending a team to inspect our you know, test matches and venues and grounds and hotels. So he said, Now, England, so check 
तो मिस्टर ज्योति बाजपाई वो डी ट्रेजरर एंड मी वो सेंट ऑन अ टू वीक ट्रिप टू इंग्लैंड टू चेक वेदर डॉर्स इज फिट एनफ फॉर अस टू चेक यू शुड हैव सेड द स्लोप इज नॉट गुड एनफ बेटर था हाँ स्लो स्लो पे ठीक करो इसको सीधा करो नो बट वी एक्चुअली यू नो हमें लोगों का इन्वेस्टमेंट चेक So that's the location. So we had to make a point which we made. The ECB tolerated us. The other major story was, he said, "Ki yahan pe koi security threat hai in the team." So the ECB must convince us they're doing everything right. Otherwise, there's a big problem. Would I be? Kisi ne agar sachin ko kuch kar diya, kuch naat bhi laga diya, then it becomes a huge national issue. So convey your concern to England and get assurances from the police and court or whoever. So we were taken to Scotland, yeah. To explain to us that our family has a lot of concern here. We have some environmental threat here, BCC has it, and that's why we came here. So please assure us that what are you doing? So Scotland was a surprise, yeah. And we had this meeting in the boardroom, the top executives and sort of senior people trying to convince us that we have done all the background checks, the Sikh organisations have been, you know. Check. We were people on the ground. We've done everything. There's no threat, and we were insisting we threat. Now look at the funny situation. Who am I, as a security guy, talking to the top professionals there, and just to make a point because we wanted it to be done like that. Well done. I think there's a back story, much like that South Africa story. I wonder if Mr. Dalmia got that piece of that suggestion from somebody sitting between us. Why not? Yeah, because. Here is another gentleman who is not very fond of the sort of superior attitude of uh, the English speaking establishment. It's changed. It, it, it's changed. That they've, they've had to change. I thought one of the most heartbreaking things, and I think uh, we spent some time on that, was India going to Pakistan in 2004, because I think in that period, 2004 to 2006, the people to people contacts were uh, were much closer. We dis we discovered that people actually didn't dislike each other as much as we thought they did. But just going to Pakistan in 2004, India had gone since 89, and and to go there and win a series and come back. I mean, I I, I think along with 21, 2004, one of the most path breaking in Indian tour of Pakistan, fit to rank with 1971 and 2021. Tell us a little bit more about that Pakistan tour in 2004. Firstly, you know, Prophet Zia. Prof and I were part of a security recce team, which went. What, were you so sort of security specialist? <laughs> I don't know. I became a security specialist without knowing anything. <laughs> so Prof and me and uh, Yashoda, we were sent to check out the security issue. And in this case, there were genuine concerns about India going to Pakistan. And uh, as soon as we reached, we expressed our concerns, genuine concerns, which Yashoda articulated very strongly. He was VIP security head, Ministry of Home Affairs. He is the elder brother, and uh, they got the message: "Ki ye problem hai," and they need genuine reassurances. And but they were clear that ye tour hoga, and I think very soon the president there passed orders: <coughs> whatever the Indian you know, people want should happen, and he passed instructions down the line, and it happened. But now the outcome of this was the security was unprecedented when you actually went there. Just to give you an example, in Karachi, something like say from Jopati to Narman Point, for the Indian team the road was blocked off. Okay, no traffic. Secondly, on every major building there were snipers. Every crossing there was rapid action force, armored vehicles stationed. Ahead of the team bus there is. Motorcycle outriders. In front of them, an armored car. Behind the motorcycle, it's a behind the armored car. Team bus go for helicopter. So the players got scared. You know, this is excessive. Where are they? You know, it's not this. The threat is not that how bad the situation is. The security actually scared them. Now there's another story to this. That uh, there was this massive thing that India ka aana that unlikely hai because security. So we were frustrated. But when India started winning, tour happened, and India started winning. India won the one day and won the test matches. So Imran made a comment. He said, "Before security needed the Indian team, now security needs the Pakistan team." 
<laughs> so that was actually an exceptional tour. Uh, cricket wise, it was very good that you know we won the one days. I remember the ODI at Karachi, the first game, where Kaif had an incredible catch of Shoaib Malik, which changed the game. It was a tight game, in so Pajas, in so Pajas or something. I think Nehra defended 8 or 9 in the last over. Anyway, team Jeet Gai, in the dressing room. Mein. Now, Sunny mentioned that you know people like me were in the dressing room, we could absorb what is happening. So I think Yubi or somebody said, we are watching a Gale Mein Aage. Nehra said something else, which was a different level. But who are you to read the book? I don't know what happened. So some marketing knows you have now. You say the book is all right. You know, but that was exceptional in terms of Cap Sketch, which turned it around. Then there was uh, obviously view with you know, 300 in Bhutan, <laughs> Javid making for 78 pinned days. So the great cricket match, fantastic. But I think the warmth and the positivity of the tour was another major feature. Everywhere you went, you were very welcome. And uh, after a while, it was like being at home, and there was no fiction or anything you know, at any stage. So you talked about, they just come to things I think that Amrit wants to talk about. You talked about Sunny. You talked about Ratsi. You talked about Jagmohan Dalmia. Is there anyone else who's, who in your book has, 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 has pride of place? I didn't, I didn't mention Tiger at the start. You got to know Tiger Badawi very well over the years. You never actually went with him on a tour because he didn't like flying. I don't listen to him much. I do my time. Uh, we got to know him by chance because his nephew Amir was with us in college. Piyush and I and we played together. We got to know him. And uh, Tiger was in Delhi. So sometimes we'd go to, with Amir to his house and meet Tiger. And he would you know, sort of tolerate us, talk to us for five minutes or something in, in those days. Now, there are certain things which struck us. Eh? We had this aura about Tiger. Yeah. We had not seen much of him playing because he was, and there's no good footage available. So we just heard and learned so much about him, but not actually see him play. But we got to know him, and I realized that over a long period of time, a tiger would never talk about himself. Never. I tried my best. You know, Melbourne, talk about 100 leads. He would never, ever talk. He would talk about everybody else, happily, never about himself. He would even come to umpire some of our social games. And he would umpire at both ends, you know, for half an hour. And even on those social occasions at the cricket game, he would not touch a bat. Not even hold it, not even knocking or going to go, never. And Rasinji was a great friend of uh, Tiger and uh, Rasinji once told me that uh, Tiger was the best fielder ever in India. And I said better than Azhar, Solkar, you know, Abel, Sukhi, so many other. So he said no, no, Tiger was the best. So next time I met Tiger, I told him, hey, Raj Bhai was saying this about you. The Tiger just looked at me and said, you know Raj? I said yeah, he's mad. <laughs> Shut up. Then, but I think the funniest story about Tiger, which I've got in the book, has come from Sunny. I think he should narrate it, of what happened to him when he wanted to know, in a moment of game, uh, how to address Tiger. <laughs> yeah, this was, this was the, uh, the team called Vazir Sultan course, yeah. where Tiger was the captain, the India player. Everybody else was uh, a young, uh, a player, a French player, emerging player. There were a few Ranji Trophy players in there. But none of us had played under Tiger. Uh, so we didn't know how to address him. So on the eve of the uh, match when there was the, there was a party thrown by the Vajir Sultan uh, people, we, uh, we were in a corner and we asked, uh, you know, we saw Tiger. The Tiger was there, Jasima was there. So we asked Tiger, we, we decided amongst ourselves, how do we address him? He, he just, he didn't even come and say hello to us at that uh, party. So, uh, we decided that whoever next day does well first day, whether he, you know, was batting, supposing he's batting, and he, if you bat first and we come at lunchtime and the man is batting 60, 70, he, he will be the one who will ask Tiger what to, how to address him. Or if it was a bowler over a wicket, if you're feeling a bowler got a wicket, 
in the board where people come to congratulate you know, the board would ask him you know how to how how to address it do we address him as skipper uh, captain pat tiger nawab sir nawab sir you know all these things so we didn't know what how to you know as luck would have it they we, we, we were feeling and the first wicket was a run out which i effected so i direct hit run out <coughs> So Tiger was, you know, standing in the covers next to me. So as soon as the wicket fell, uh, he sat down and he was tying his shoelaces. And so we were all around at a, at a respectable distance, not very close normally. You know, at, at this distance, and not, you know, most of us were around. In those days, not the deep finding, deep third man didn't come to, 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 celebrate, to, to the celebrate the wicket. So there were about six of us, six of us around, and everybody looking at me, and you know, with eye contact. <laughs> You ask, you ask, kind of thing. So I finally asked him, "How do we call you?" And it's just, you know, sir, whatever do we call you, Captain, Skipper, uh, Tiger, and uh, Tiger just tied his shoelaces, looked up at me like this, turned, got up, and went back to the <laughs> So we never found out, you know, what what to what, what to call. Him. Yeah, that on that interesting anecdote, I think we need to uh, we need to say thank you. So thank you, thank you everyone for coming. I'm, I think I'm saying that on behalf of maybe Amrit should say himself too. But this conversation is a very good indicator of what you'll find in the book because there's there's no I say gyan given in the book. He's even he's even prevented himself the luxury of saying that dressing room can be done. So it's, it's very much like what we discussed today, and I think you'll enjoy reading. It. Thanks everybody for coming. Uh, Sunny, thank you very much. Oh, this is an honor for, for you to release the book. It's not launch yet. Uh, very nice of you to have come. Prof. Diana is here, my colleague from the railways. Uh, Sanjay, Pamphre, Praveen, who have been with us on tours. Now everybody else. Thanks a lot. So thank you very much for coming.